Hi everyone, my name is Corey Lacino. I'm a developer advocate on the Ads Developer Relations team. Our goal today is to take a look at how to build and validate queries against the Google Ads API using the Google Ads query language, Gackle. In the Google Ads API, when you're trying to get back data on ads or campaigns or ad groups, you're going to use the Google Ads service. Very similar, you're passing up a query. We're going to do the same thing in the Google Ads field service. We're going to pass up a query and we're going to get back metadata on the actual query that we can create in the Google Ads service to give you a better, deeper understanding of the Google Ads query language. And, and we'll also walk you through how to programmatically validate and build those queries, as well as what tools will allow you to do it ad hoc. So what tools are you going to need to follow along with me today? The terminal, and that terminal is going to need curl. It's going to need an active uh, Google Ads API developer token. You're also going to need a Google Cloud project that has uh, Google Ads API enabled and have your uh, client ID and client secret for that project as well. And the last thing you're going to need is a valid OAuth refresh token. Let's go ahead and move right into our console and we'll take a look at uh, getting started here. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to set some environment variables. So we're setting the uh, API version to whatever version you're using. Right now I'm using version 8. You'll need your developer token, your client ID, client secret, and refresh token. Just go ahead and uh, replace the bracket, insert bracket, with your value. So it's just uh, quote your value quote. Notice that the OAuth2 access token is not populated. See the comment there. Um, don't worry about that. Leave that blank for right now. We will populate that in the next step. So I already have mine set. I'm not going to run that. What I am going to run, however, <clears throat> is uh, creating a function called gen access token. So this is just a helper function to make it so that we don't need to manually uh, type out everything to generate an access token every time that we need one. If you're following along with this session, you'll probably only need to run this once. If you're uh, watching this later on or if you take a break, you may need to run this multiple times. So let me just go ahead and paste that in here. Gen access token is a function. It's going to take your client ID, client secret, and refresh token, and it's going to go hit the OAuth2 endpoint and pull back an access token for you. So let's go ahead and run that now and let's see how we're doing. So gen access token, let's run this. And great, new access token generated. Now this access token is only good for a short period of time. Um, <clears throat> and this access token will um, automatically save off into that OAuth2 access token slot. So uh, you don't have to do anything with this. It's just gonna go ahead and work for you. All right, and I do have one more helper function for you as well. Uh, just so we don't have to write out all the boilerplate curl every time we're making a call against the Google Ads field service, we've made a function to make that a little bit easier called GAFS, Google Ads field service. <clears throat> I'll paste that in here. So this function is going to take in an argument. <clears throat> Excuse me. That argument is the query, uh, the query string that you're going to pass in. Then it's going to hit the API version specified uh, along with your developer token and that access token we just generated to return the results from that query. So let's go ahead and give this a run and let's just see if this is working for us before we move on to the next step. So we're going to run GAFS and we're going to pass in a query against the field service to validate that it's actually returning data. In this scenario, we are um, just running a very simple query to select what segments and metrics are available uh, for the campaign resource. And we'll dive into this in much more detail in just a little bit here, but let's go ahead and see where we're at first. Great. Perfect. If, as long as you can see total results count one and you can see the data for the segments and metrics above, then you're good. We're ready to move on. So now that we've seen how to get data and we're, we know we're authenticated, what data are we looking for? What is the first thing that we have to do to understand how to build or validate a query? <clears throat> well, every query in Gackle centers around the from clause. And, and specifically, what's called the from resource. 
the from resource is the resource in the from clause, but it dictates all fields that can be used within the query, not just for selecting, but also for uh, filtering in the where clause or ordering in the, in the uh, order by. Everything that is within that query is dependent on what resource is in the from clause, the from resource. So let's take a look at what resources we can use in the from clause. And the answer you're going to find is actually all resources. Um, anything where category is resource, you can use that as the from resource, the resource in the from clause. So in this query we're running here, we're going to select where category equals resource. Again, filtering down to only resources. And we're just going to select the name of that resource and its metrics just to show what other fields are available. Let's run this. Great, and you'll see there are 127 resources that we can use as the from resource within a query. So if we scroll through this here, you'll see uh, name of this resource is web page view, name of this resource is video, name of this resource is user list, user interest. These are all different resources you can use. Let's just use a fairly common one here. Let's, um, let's use campaign and we'll stick with that going forward. And let's take a look at what we can select with or, or filter on or order by with campaign as our from resource. The first and easiest to get is just what attributes of campaign itself can we query. So an attribute, uh, by nature of what an attribute is in Gackle, is uh, the resource dot some field. So campaign dot ID, campaign dot name. Each of those are attributes of campaign. They're fields on the campaign object. So what we're going to do is we're going to use that um, uh, campaign dot wildcard concept and that's how we're going to filter down our results for only the attributes of campaign in the Google Ads field service. So we're selecting the names of the fields, those attributes, where the name is like campaign dot wildcard. Now if I run this, <clears throat> I'm going to get 71 results where you can see campaign dot something, campaign dot something. Each of those are attributes of campaign and they can be selected, they can be filtered, they can be ordered <clears throat> whenever you have campaign in the from clause. So the next thing to look at, now that we know the list of attributes that we have available to us, what else can we query along with the campaign resource? Well, it breaks down into three sections, really. There are metrics, there are segments, and there are attribute resources. So to get all of those, we actually only need one query to return what is available, and that is selecting the metrics metadata field, the segments metadata field, and the attribute resources metadata field, where name equals whatever resource we're looking for, in this case, campaign. So if I run this, we're going to get back three arrays, and each array is going to contain fields that are available of that type. Now you see total results count one because we filtered where the object that we want returned is the campaign resource. But within that, you're going to see the segments array, the metrics array, and the attribute resources array. So metrics is metrics dot and segments is segments dot. And you're going to notice that follows the same kind of paradigm that we saw with campaign dot. Uh, these aren't attributes, they're fields, but uh, they follow the same format, metrics dot something is a metric, segments.something is a segment. So all of these fields are queryable where campaign is the from resource. Now attribute resources are a little bit different. Attribute resources, you'll notice, are actually, oops, I scrolled too far, there we go, are actually just other resources. Customer is a resource. Campaign budget is a resource. What this means is, and I alluded to this earlier on, each of these resources are actually implicitly joined to campaign. So you don't have to do a join customer on campaign ID equals campaign ID. Like you don't have to worry about doing that. Instead, when you're selecting from campaign, you can just choose to add select customer.id. And that will automatically join the customer resource with your campaign resource and pull the data down. Campaign, uh, attribute resources 
work very similarly in terms of their validation to the attributes of the resource in the from clause. By that I mean any attributes of the resource in the from clause, campaign.id, campaign.name, doesn't really require much more validation after you've added it, after you've cre uh, set campaign as the from resource. And the same kind of goes for these attribute resources. If you have campaign budget, uh, .id or campaign budget name added to your select clause, um, any of those attributes are able to be added. You don't really have to worry about whether or not they play nice with other fields. So to show you what is available on those attribute resources, for each one, you would actually run the same attribute lookup like we did for campaign, only you're going to use their resource campaign budget in this scenario. So you're going to select all name of the field where the name of the field is like campaign budget dot wildcard. Running this, we're going to see that there are 17 attributes on campaign budget that are just able to be queried alongside the campaign resource. 